All right, welcome back. Uh, so things are going well. Um, it's not very exciting. We've got a window, right? So that's great. Um, it is more fun to use Tekinter with things on the, win the window. Uh, typically, people call those things widgets, by the way. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, M2E uh, and see what kind of features get added this time. So M2E, uh, I guess sometimes it's fun to run it and then talk about what it does. Um, so M2E has a button, right? So it's just got the button that says forward on it. Uh, you can click forward and it kind of responds visually, uh, but nothing happens yet. Um, that's because we haven't attached anything to happen when you click it. Uh, but we're learning how to make a button. Uh, so let's take a look at the code that's actually doing this. Uh, so it's pretty short code. It's only a few lines here. Um, so you can see that it's got everything we did last time. So it's got this um, root to Kinter object, which, you know, I think of as the window. Um, it does some stuff. And then at the bottom, it says root dot main loop. The stuff that it does, uh, it makes something called a frame. Uh, you'll notice that the frame actually is a TTK thing. So some things are in Tekinter, some things are in TTK. Um, it actually turns out most come from TTK, the, the like add-on package. Uh, and what we're adding on here is a frame. So it's kind of best practice to, instead of putting widgets straight onto the window, uh, you actually make a frame and you put that in the window and then you put buttons and things on a frame. So it's kind of like a layered. So you've got like your widgets, like your buttons, uh, your frame, uh, and then your window. And you can have multiple frames in a window. It's actually a way you can lay things out, which is neat. So here we're making a frame. Uh, we're setting the padding to 10. Uh, so you notice that there's a little margin around this button. Let's go ahead and uh, change it, right? So if you were to say uh, 100, how would things look different? Um, and now all of a sudden it's got a 100 pixel padding, right? So it's got 100 pixels uh, on all sides. And I don't really like 100, it's too big, but maybe I'll do 20 or so, right? So now it's got more padding than 10, but less padding than 100. So we're constructing an object, we're constructing a frame. Uh, that frame needs to know who is it going to go on. So the first thing is, hey, who are you putting me on? I'm putting you onto the root. That kind of sets up this parent-child relationship. Um, and then you can pass in keyword arguments. So we've kind of seen this keyword arguments thing already with EV3. Uh, but we can pass in um, certain arguments, and here we're passing in padding. There's a bunch of different arguments we can pass in. Uh, we're not going to go over them all, but we're just kind of showing padding here. Uh, and then the final thing is this dot grid function call. Uh, dot grid, uh, you can kind of think of it as like a like a, a draw, right? So it's kind of like the old window dot render. So it makes things actually show up. Uh, grid also can receive parameters. It can receive like a, a row and a column to go into. We'll do something with that later. If you don't pass in any parameters, essentially it puts everything in the same column um, at just the next available row spot. So it, in this case, um, the frame is the only thing on the root. Uh, so it works out fine not to pass any parameters to grid. So you just say, hey, grid, which, which basically means, you know, draw me, right? Make me draw. Now, at this point, with just a frame, there wouldn't be anything visible um, until we add a button. So you can see here we're constructing a button. So TTK, again, the add-on package, dot button to construct a button. The first parameter is who is your parent, like uh, in the hierarchy, who's your parent. So he's going to go on to uh, frame one, so that makes sense. He can have various parameters passed into his constructor. One of those parameters is text, so you can put text on the button, obviously. Um, and here we're saying forwards. Um, and if you change this, you know, you just say my button uh, and you were to run it again. Let me close my other window. By the way, you can totally just run it again and it'll just have two things up. Uh, but in general, it's best practice to close your old window before running it again, right? Um, so there you can see it says my button. Uh, and then we say dot grid, which basically means draw me. Uh, it puts you in uh, the column zero uh, at the next available row. Uh, so there you can click things. Uh, so this is a button, uh, not that exciting. Um, let's go do some to-dos in M5. So I hopped over to M5 here. Uh, and it says, after reading and understanding M2, uh, put a frame on the window. Well, that's easy. So I'm just going to copy this code. Oops, wrong, uh, wrong tab. Uh, put a frame on the window. Uh, so there you go. I just put a frame on the window. I used a padding of 20. Uh, I could run this right now, uh, but a frame doesn't really look like much, right? Uh, in fact, it, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of wish I hadn't run it because it made this infinitely small uh, window. 
fortunately you can grab it and resize it uh, but it made it it made a very 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 small window for me that was hard for me to find um, so i'm going to go ahead and stop that by the way if you can't see your window you can always uh, use the stop button here uh, and that'll kill it as well uh, and it'll just say hey you know you interrupted main loop so that was fine but but to do three really doesn't look very good until you do to do four uh, and that is to put a button on the frame uh, so let's go grab our code for a button uh, so this was a go forwards button uh, but let's go ahead and give it a new name um, so this uh, really what this is going to do is this is going to be my like say hello button uh, so i'm just going to go and change the name here so instead of calling it go forwards button uh, i'm just going to call it my say hello button uh, making sure to give it the same name in both places uh, and then what it's going to do is it's going to have the text on here of say hello. Now it won't do that yet, uh, so you can run it. Uh, now it it makes a real window as opposed to one that's itty bitty bitty. Um, and it, it visually says, hey, you're clicking it, uh, but nothing shows up yet. Uh, and that's because we need some skills from M3. So let's go ahead and open up M3. Uh, and you can see from the title, it's called Button Callback. Uh, it's going to be um, our solution to um, how do you make the button do something. So this one builds, so it does root just like before. It does main loop just like before. It does a frame just like before. It does a button just like before. There's only one new command here, uh, and this is, um, it says button uh, bracket uh, command. This syntax is probably new for you. Uh, this is... Um, the syntax for the way Python does dictionaries. Uh, so if this was a list, uh, you would totally say like bracket zero, uh, and it would grab the the object that's pointed to by index zero. Uh, but here you're saying, um, give me the thing that's pointed to uh, by the keyword command. Um, and so it's a dictionary-like notation. Uh, dictionaries do this in Python. This isn't actually a dictionary, but it, the syntax looks like a dictionary. Um, and what command is, is it's really uh, setting an instance variable uh, on the button. And the instance variable that it's setting is a function. Uh, so you're setting up a function. Uh, and we're using Lambda again, right? So Lambda is back. Um, so we learned about Lambda with the buttons in EV3, and you're going to use Lambda even more with Tkinter. Basically, every uh, button that you have um, and every key press binding you've got is going to be connected to some Lambda function. Uh, here we've written lambda on two lines just to make it kind of look more like a def function. Um, so you can see it kind of works like def in a lot of ways. You don't need the two lines um, and these parentheses on the outside, by the way, they were just to like make it make it format well on two lines. Personally, I like to just keep them mine on one line, right? So I, I understand the concept of lambda. It's a way to make an inline function. Uh, with lambda, you get exactly one statement. Usually that one statement calls some other function. Uh, that way you can do more. Uh, here it's calling the function do stuff. Um, do stuff is a completely worthless function. It just prints a random 10 letter string to the console. Don't even have to read that code. I just know that it, it does stuff. Uh, so let's go and run this guy. Uh, so when we run it, it says, uh, it's got a button that says print stuff. Yep, that's totally what I expect. And then down here is every time I click it, uh, it will print a completely random gibberish string of 10 characters. That's just, that's just what do stuff does, right? And we made it do such a random task because it just doesn't matter. We're showing you the syntax uh, for connecting uh, of callback. So really, uh, the only thing we need at all that's new is this one line right here. So I'm going to take this one line right here. Uh, so this is connecting via Lambda. Uh, and I'm going to put it over in my M5. Where's my M5 at? So it says, after reading and understanding M3, make your button respond to a button press and print hello to the console. Uh, so let's just go ahead and copy this over. Um, say hello is the name of my button. So instead of saying print stuff button, I'm going to say say hello button. Uh, command uh, is still the same. So I'm, I'm connecting it uh, to an instance variable using this dictionary-like notation. S syntax, uh, you, just, you can pattern match it, right? Uh, and then we say lambda. And then here with our one statement, we did a function. You can do whatever you want with your one statement. Um, if you need to do a lot of stuff, that one statement better be a function call. But here we actually, we only need to do one thing, right? Um, so instead of calling a function, uh, we'll just do it. Um, 
technically print is calling a function, but we won't get into that. Uh, and we just want to print uh, hello. And again, you can use single quotes or double quotes, doesn't matter. It's also interesting with the Kinter that uh, when you call grid, doesn't really matter. Um, it just says, hey, I want to be drawn. And you can actually do things after you say grid, and that's fine. So I, I don't actually need uh, to put it before grid. Now, to be honest, usually I do. Usually I do put it on before grid, but um, I'm going to keep it here with the to do. So now when I run this, uh, it will have a button that says say hello. Uh, and then when I click it, uh, it actually prints uh, hello, which is neat. Cool. And so if we wanted to, by the way, if we wanted to do more, uh, we could just totally call a function here. I'll tell you what, let's just do it. Uh, we'll just say uh, print hello. So we'll just call a function that we make called print hello. Uh, and then we need to define that function somewhere. You can define it above main uh, or after main. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to define mine after main. Feels like it's way down here because of all those comments. Uh, and so we'll just say this is my uh, simple function. Uh, and we're just going to make it print hello here, right? Um, but the idea is that you could do many things, right? So if you wanted to have a lot of code, uh, this is how you would do it. Uh, so I kind of did that fast. I'll show you my code again one more time. But you can see it works uh, exactly the same. So I click hello and it says hello. So the only difference with this style is that I, I used my one statement to call a function. Um, and then I had to define that function. And I had to do it either before or after main. I chose to do it after. Um, and then that one function turns out to have a single statement in it. Uh, this is overkill. Uh, I would probably have left it as just print hello. I just wanted to show that you could do it uh, a different way. All right, so that's enough for buttons. Uh, so we'll cut this video off and we'll come back next time to talk about text entries. All right, see you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.